Welcome to the Quick Start tutorial for AFT Arrow 7. This tutorial will teach you the fundamentals of using and understanding AFT Arrow 7. The prerequisites are passing an undergraduate engineering course in the analysis of compressible fluid mechanics and familiarity with standard industry practice in compressible pipe flow analysis. AFT Arrow 7 is a general purpose tool for modeling flow in pipe networks with compressible fluid. Arrow calculates pressure drop, flow distribution, and energy balance. AFT Arrow can model the equation of state using ideal gas or a variety of real gas models. AFT Arrow 7 has the following capabilities. Modeling compressible single phase fluid systems, modeling open and closed systems, modeling systems that are pressure or compressor or fan driven, and AFT Arrow offers customizable component and property databases. Engineering assumptions and limitations include the following. The flow is steady state, the flow is assumed to be compressible, the fluid is single phase and superheated, and the change of fluid properties due to chemical reactions is not modeled. AFT Arrow is broken up into five primary windows. The workspace and the model data windows are primarily for building and defining your system, while the output, the graph results, and the visual report are primarily for reviewing the results. The five primary windows can also be accessed from their respective tabs, shown here. Now let's explore the workspace in more detail. To build a model, you'll be using the toolbox on the left-hand side of the workspace window. This is broken into two drawing tools at the top of the toolbox and 20 junctions at the bottom of the toolbox. To draw a pipe on the workspace, simply click on the pipe drawing tool and then draw a line where you would like your pipe to be located. To place a junction on the workspace, simply click on the junction and then drag and drop it onto the workspace. To move a pipe or junction, simply drag and drop it to where you would like to move it. To move one end of a pipe, you can either drag and drop the handle on the end of the pipe, or you can move the connected junction. To enter input data, simply double click on the pipe or junction and a properties window will open. The properties window is the platform for entering data to define the pipes and junctions throughout your model. To help you identify the minimum required input data, we have highlighted those cells in blue. To toggle the highlight feature on or off, you can double click in the background of any properties window. We will be disabling the blue highlight feature for this quick start tutorial in order to make data entry easier to see. The checklist indicates what needs to be completed prior to running your model. This can be accessed from the view menu or from the checklist icon shown here. The solution control is defined by default. The cost settings may be activated if needed. See the help system in AFT Arrow for more information about these checklist items. The System Properties window is where you define your system fluid, as well as the equation of state and enthalpy models you would like to use. In order to fulfill the Define Pipes and Junctions checklist item, you must first construct your model in the workspace and fill in all the required data for each pipe and junction. The model status light in the bottom right corner will turn from red to green when your model is fully defined and ready to be run. Clicking on the model status light will access the checklist. Now let's dig a little deeper into the toolbox. The pipe drawing tool allows you to draw pipes on the workspace. Keep in mind that every pipe must be connected to a junction on either end. The minimum required input data for a pipe includes the hydraulic diameter, pipe length, and friction model. To help you define pipes in your model, we have provided a pipe material database which allows you to select standard pipe materials, sizes, and schedules. As thermodynamics are intrinsically coupled with gas dynamics, AFT Arrow will always calculate the heat transfer throughout your system. You can choose to model heat transfer in each pipe throughout your model using one of seven different heat transfer models. By default, we will model all pipes as adiabatic. The lower portion of the toolbox contains 20 junctions to help you model your system. 
The tank junction acts as a pressure type system boundary, sourcing or sinking fluid to or from the system. The branch junction is used as a generic connection between pipes. You can connect up to 25 pipes to this junction. By default, this junction balances mass flow, so all flow into this junction is equal to all flow out of this junction. The valve junction can be modeled a number of different ways. The subsonic losses can be defined with a user-specified constant CV, constant KV, constant K factor, or a resistance curve. Alternatively, you can select from our handbook database containing various options from Crane, Idlechick, and Miller. The compressor junction allows you to define how the fluid is propelled through your system. You can define your centrifugal compressor with the compressor curve, or with the sizing model to define a fixed volume or mass flow rate, or a fixed pressure or head rise. Similar options exist when the fan or positive displacement compressor options are selected. You can define your compressor curve using either a volume or mass flow rate versus either a head or pressure rise. Optionally, you can also include efficiency or power curve data. Now let's build a simple compressed air system, as shown below. The purpose of this model will be to determine the delivery conditions at the tools, junctions 7, 8, 9, and 10. Air will be taken from outside to supply four machine tools, so we will define our system fluid to be air. Notice that our system properties are now defined. Now let's build the model using the toolbox on the left. Notice that as you hover over an icon in the toolbox, there are shortcuts that appear in the bottom left of the pane. If you double-click the pipe drawing tool, you'll be able to draw multiple pipes consecutively without having to re-click the pipe drawing tool each time. The machine tools are sensitive to temperature, but the manufacturer says they can compensate for this if they know the extremes of delivery temperature the tools will see. We will evaluate the operating conditions that will result in the hottest delivery conditions first. In the interest of time, only one example showing how to define a pipe will be demonstrated. Pipe 2 is 25 feet of uninsulated 2-inch Schedule 40 steel pipe. The system conditions that will result in the hottest delivery fluid temperature will happen when the building ambient temperature is 75 degrees with an external convection coefficient of 1 BTU per hour foot squared Rankine. If you are following along, please pause the video and enter the data for all the pipes in your model, as shown below. 
using a convective heat transfer model with a 75 degree Fahrenheit ambient temperature and an external convection coefficient of 1 BTU per hour foot squared Rankine. These ambient conditions represent the conditions inside the building where the tools are housed. We will assume that the pipe at the compressor inlet from the outside, P1, is heavily insulated and therefore adiabatic. For the hottest delivery conditions, we'll model the outside air at 110 degrees Fahrenheit. All elevations throughout the system will be set to zero feet. The compressor has the following data, and for the hottest delivery conditions, it will be assumed to operate at 80% efficiency. In order to account for the compressor heating the air due to the defined inefficiency, we will select Determine from Efficiency Data under the Compression Process Thermodynamics option. The branches can be modeled as lossless at an elevation of zero feet. For demonstration purposes, the data has already been entered in this model. You can double check input data by right clicking and holding the right click button down on any pipe or junction. If you are following along, please pause the video and enter the branch data now. The nozzles at the tools, modeled as valves, have a pressure drop of 8 PSID at 0.2 pound mass per second, discharging to atmospheric pressure. We will model each valve with a resistance curve to reflect this pressure drop information. As we know only a single data point, we need to make some assumptions. Because pressure drop increases nonlinearly, it is usually fairly accurate to use a resistance curve plotted through the zero point, the known data point, and an extrapolated quadratic data point. If you enter the known data point and then click the button Fill as Quadratic, Arrow will generate the zero data point and the extrapolated quadratic data point for you. We will be modeling the nozzles as exit valves, discharging into external conditions. You can reduce the time required for data entry by using the global edit feature or the duplicate feature, both of which can be accessed through the edit drop-down menu. You can also speed up the process by using the Copy Data option within the Properties window. Notice that our model is now fully defined and we are ready to run it and review the results. Before running the model, let's clean up the visual layout of the model. 
it's easy to move the text labels and rotate junctions on the workspace in order to make them look more aesthetically pleasing. Now that you are familiar with the workspace window, let's review the second input window, the model data window. The model data window is a useful tool to help you review your input in a text-based layout. It's easy to give your model a sanity check by scanning down each column as well as by double-checking orders of magnitude. You can double-click on the row of the table corresponding to any pipe or junction. This will bring up its properties window in order to modify any pipe or junction input. Before you can run your model, the final step is to save it. This model has already been saved as quickstarttutorial.aro. Now let's run the model and review the results. The output window looks similar to the model data window, except that now we are looking at the results of the analysis rather than user input. For the input conditions that result in the hottest delivery conditions, we can see that the maximum delivery static temperature is 202 degrees Fahrenheit. The input conditions that result in the coldest delivery conditions are shown below. It's important to note that changes made to any input data will erase output data from the last run. The global pipe edit feature will make short work of changing the heat transfer configuration to reflect a lower indoor ambient temperature and a higher convection coefficient. Remember that P1 is heavily insulated, so we're modeling it as adiabatic. For the input conditions that result in the coldest delivery conditions, we can see that the minimum delivery static temperature is 65.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Based on the two extremes in operating conditions, we can confidently tell the machine tool manufacturer that the tools will always have air supplied between 65.6 and 202 degrees Fahrenheit. This concludes the AFT Aero 7 Quick Start tutorial. Thank you for watching.